get ready to witness an out-of-this-world revelation. In this jaw-dropping SpaceX video, get exclusive access to SpaceX's new and mind-blowing plan utilizing the mighty Falcon Heavy. Brace yourself for a fascinating and exhilarating voyage as this groundbreaking project has the potential to redefine everything we thought we knew about space travel. Discover mind-boggling engineering, stunning visuals, and unparalleled ambition as SpaceX pushes the limits of innovation with Falcon Heavy. Strap in and prepare for an adrenaline-fueled journey through the captivating realm of cutting-edge space exploration. Falcon Heavy is ready to take you places you never imagined. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, the world's most powerful commercial rocket, has captivated the world with its immense power and ability to carry heavy payloads into space since its debut. Sadly, the number of Falcon Heavy flights has only reached nine times so far, too modest compared to its brother Falcon 9 with nearly 300 launches. This is what makes space enthusiasts regret the most. However, everything will be changed, soon as Elon Musk has an insane plan to increase Falcon Heavy's yearly liftoff rate by dozens of times over the next few years. So what is SpaceX's plan actually like? Don't miss out on this groundbreaking video that is soaring to the top of the must-watch list for all space enthusiasts. Discuss everything about this in today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. St but before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. Back on April 24, the United States Space Force revealed interesting news that Elon Musk's SpaceX had been approved to lease a second rocket launch complex at a military base in California, helping the space company prepare for its fifth launch site in the United States. Under the lease, SpaceX will launch its workhorse Falcon rocket from Space Launch Complex 6 or Slick 6 at Vandenberg Space Force Base, a military launch site north of Los Angeles, where the space company operates another launch pad, SLC-4. Besides that, it has two others in Florida and its private star base site in South Texas. All Falcon Heavy launches have been conducted from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. SpaceX also has a launch pad at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida and 1-4. Starship flights at Starbase in South Texas. Here's one of the most iconic launch sites in the world, but SLC-6 history was filled with cancellations. SLC-6 was originally developed during the 1960s to support the Titan III launches of the United States Air Force's Manned Orbiting Laboratory or MOL. Two military astronauts would have spent 30 days in space conducting reconnaissance operations. The United States government canceled MOL in June 1969 without any crewed flights, cost overruns, scheduled delays, and improvements in uncrewed reconnaissance satellites rendered. The program redundant. SLC-6 was repurposed during the 1980s to support military polar orbit launches of NASA's space shuttle. The United States Air Force scrapped those plans in 1989 following the loss of the Space Shuttle Challenger and her seven-member crew in 1986. A decision was made to revert to launching military payloads on expendable rockets. However, that doesn't mean there are no achievements here. Lockheed Martin conducted four launches of its Athena-1 and Athena-2 rockets for SLC-6 during the 1990s. The boosters compiled a record of two successes and two failures. ULA has conducted 10 Delta for launches from SLC-6 since June 2006. All flights were successful. ULA is now retiring the Delta IV rocket in favor of its new Vulcan Centaur booster. There are two additional Delta IV launches carrying National Reconnaissance Office satellites scheduled for this year in 2024. After its final Delta IV heavy launch in September 2022, ULA vacated the site. This gives SpaceX more room to handle an increasingly busy launch schedule for commercial, government, and internal satellite launches with the firm's yearly liftoff rate could reach 100 in a couple of years. As Nate Jansen, manager of Launchpad Systems and Operations for SpaceX at Vandenberg and a 10-year employee of the firm said, We're really ramping up Vandenberg to rates that we've never seen before and the area hasn't seen before. From one launch four years ago to three the next year and 12 the following year, SpaceX expects about 30 liftoffs by the end of this year. For 2024, the rate could jump to 50, then rocket to 100 in 2025. Next year we'll be launching about once a week, but the plan in about two years is about every three to four days, Jansen said. Work to ready the site should begin soon, 
with the goal of the first Falcon launch from SLC-6 taking place in mid-2025 and the first Falcon Heavy contract for Vandenberg in 2026, Janssen added. This good start will pave the way for the company's more ambitious plans, one of which is to win defense contracts that their competitors also desire. Vandenberg's Space Force Base allows for launches in a southern trajectory over the Pacific Ocean, often used for weather monitoring military or spy satellites that commonly rely on polar Earth orbits. SpaceX's grant of Space Launch Complex 6 comes as rocket companies prepare to compete for the Pentagon's Phase 3 National Security Space Launch or NSSL Phase 3 program. NSSL Phase 3 is a multi-billion dollar procurement of launch services projected for 2025 through 2034. The United Launch Alliance and SpaceX won NSSL Phase 2 in 2020 and their current contracts are being recompeted. Proposals are due December 15 and contract awards are projected in mid-2024. There are two solicitations for NSSL Phase 3 because the Space Force is splitting the program into two lanes. The Lane 1 portion of NSSL Phase 3 includes lower-risk missions to lower orbits, open to any launch provider with a proven flight record. As many as 30 missions will be awarded annually over 10 years, extending from fiscal year 2025 through 2034. The Lane 2 solicitation is open to heavy lift launch providers certified by the United States Space Force and can fly payloads to nine reference orbits, including some of the most demanding missions. Plans to select a third provider in Lane 2 would open the door to a new entrant like Blue Origin owned by Jeff Bezos, which is developing its new Glenn rocket. Coincidentally, in November, it was reported that Jeff's company was in the process of purchasing United Launch Alliance from its parent company. Blue Origin purchasing ULA would instantly give the company an orbital rocket as Vulcan is ready to fly and will most likely succeed on its first flight. It's like if you can't make a good enough rocket yourself, but you are rich, then the best way is to use the money to buy a new rocket from someone else. In a way, this is beneficial as it will give BO access to multi-billion dollar defense contracts that will start bringing in some significant revenue for the company. Especially both BO and ULA are already so closely connected with their before contract. Bezos has also connected through Amazon as both Vulcan and the Atlas V have contracts to launch Kuiper satellites for the online retailer. However, the Space Force may decide only to award two contracts if the government determines there are less than three awardable offers said the final RFP. Lane 2 providers must demonstrate a capability to perform at least eight national security missions annually. The decision to award less than three contracts will be made at contract award next year, said the Space Systems Command. To win a Lane 2 contract, the command said, an offeror must have a credible plan to obtain certification by 1 October 2026, among other things. If a launch provider is awarded a Lane 2 contract but does not complete their certification, including certification flights and non-recurring design validation work, by 1 October of each order year, then the government will not assign any missions to that launch provider for that order year. All three Lane 2 winners will be eligible for up to $100 million a year in funding to pay for military unique requirements, such as having both East and West Coast launch sites, vertical integration facilities, and giving the Space Force access to their commercial. Launch Data Discussing the final result of the contract, some predict that the magic sauce here is the guarantee that ULA and BO will not be the two winners to the exclusion of SpaceX, purely because ULA and BO use the same engines. For that reason, SpaceX is estimated at the 60% mark. The most diversified operating fleet of launchers and the superior capability and cadence. Either ULA or BO. If BO is chosen, ULA will go out of business. This is unlikely though given BO's infantile approach to commitments thus far. ULA will be chosen and BO will benefit laterally along with Northrop as a subcontractor for propulsion elements. United Launch Alliance will not witness the anticipated debut of its next-generation Vulcan rocket in 2023, as initially scheduled. This means the Colorado-based launch company will end 2023 with just three launches. To consider, its rival SpaceX, meanwhile, has launched three rockets in three days during this calendar year. SpaceX is likely to end the year with 100 total launches. As for ULA, three launches? That is the company's lowest total number of launches since its founding in 2006 when the rocket business of Lockheed Martin and Boeing emerged. The statement comes a couple of days after the rocket conducted a wet dress rehearsal, where the vehicle was fully fueled and the countdown was to proceed to the final seconds. Before cutting off.
but United Launch Alliance CEO Tori Bruno said a couple of routine ground issues came up near the end of the test. Ground teams were targeting a T-0 of 4.30 p.m. Eastern on Friday. Based on observations of vending during the operation, it appeared the countdown reached its final four minutes before an abort occurred. The Vulcan vehicle left the launch pad and returned to the Vertical Integration Facility building at Launch Complex 41 on Saturday afternoon. I'd like a full WDR before our first flight, so Christmas Eve is likely out, Bruno said, in his post on X. He added that they are working on schedules, but we know another test has been scheduled for as soon as Tuesday. Bruno said that the next launch window, based on Peregrine's needs, opens on January 8 of 2024 and would likely last for four days. Dan Hedgerson, Astrobotics Vice President of Business Development said that the nominal time from launch to landing is between 30 to 39 days. It was not immediately clear if there is a different transit time for the early January launch window. With the launch potentially shifting to January, that changes the landscape for moonbound missions. Liftoff on January 8 would mean Peregrine would launch just four days before the opening of the launch window for Intuitive Machines' Nova Sea lander on board a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Several factors have contributed to the delay of the Vulcan's first flight. One of the primary reasons is the prolonged development of the B-4 engines. The engines, which are a crucial component of the Vulcan's first stage, have experienced technical challenges that have pushed back their delivery schedule. Additionally, the global supply chain disruptions and the ongoing impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic have also played a role in that delay. The postponement is a setback for the ULA and its customers, including Astrobotic Technology, which had planned to use the Vulcan to deliver its Peregrine Lunar Lander to the Moon as part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services program. The delay may necessitate the use of alternative launch vehicles or adjustments to mission timelines. Despite the delay, ULA remains confident in the Vulcan's future success. The company has emphasized its commitment to ensuring that the Vulcan rocket meets all necessary safety and performance standards before its debut. The additional time will allow ULA to conduct thorough testing and validation of the rocket's systems. The delay of the Vulcan rocket's debut is a reminder of the complexities and challenges inherent in space launch vehicle development. As the aerospace industry continues to evolve with new technologies and players, the successful deployment of vehicles like the Vulcan will be critical to maintaining a competitive end. Innovative Space Launch Market And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time. By the way, are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app? Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people.